Well, hello, sir. Uh, it is is amazing to have you here, and I cannot wait to chat. And we're going to talk about uh, Last Spartan in just a minute. Um, but what I like to do to kick things off, or what we like to do to kick things off, is to talk about uh, nerd origin stories. Um, and so basically, I want to take things back and kind of get what was like growing up, like the first fandom or hobby or anything that like caught you and hooked you and you know, made you a, you know, like a, a huge fan of, of, of anything could be anything out there. Oh, oh. what really got me hooked on, uh, on, on the whole thing. I was a tall a skinny kid, glasses, braces. That was dyslexic growing up in Canada, hated, hated school. So what I would do on Saturdays is I would watch stampede wrestling. And I said, someday I'm going to do that. And everybody's like, yeah, right. And then I'd start watching action films. And then in between that, I'd be looking at my comics and just fantasizing about becoming uh, an actor and a wrestler and all of this. And um, then I eventually just, uh, uh, I guess, grew the balls and, and went down and talked to the hearts. And they said, Man, you got the size. Let's see what happens. So I went into Stu Hart's dungeon. He stretched me a couple of times. I kept coming back. And uh, here we are today, 11 and a half years of pro wrestling and, and wow. doing the movies and film and stuff. And, and now I'm getting to do what I really love. So, yeah. Well, you have a beyond successful, beyond perennial career. Um, like you said, wrestling to movies. Uh, to now this, which is, is really cool. And I, I can't wait to talk about this before, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, you've, you've, you've done some of the most iconic and, and biggest movie franchises around, obviously, I mean, if you look around, obviously I, I'm, I'm partial to something like X-Men. Um, and so I got to ask you like what, how that came about and what that was like really kind of being a part of a movie that started the entire multi-billion dollar you know uh comic book movie industry we see today it's 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 just it, it can't be understated about the importance of that film and yeah. what it kicked off and you know it's it's crazy how it came about because they were talking to my tag partner kevin nash and they were asking me if i wanted to do stunts you know and, they're, and then they're talking like well there's this 140 foot decelerator fall and i'm like oh no i don't really want to do that. okay <laughs> i'll talk to you guys and then um, the stunt coordinator showed Brian Singer my uh, headshot because I had the long hair back then and the Fu Manchu. And he's like, man, I want to see this guy for Sabretooth, right? <sighs> well, I go out to Cinema Secrets in the Valley in California and I go, hey, I need some fake teeth. And I need, you know, and they got the poly dent and all of that stuff, put it all in and then uh, went in to see Brian Singer. And... Um, there was this little kid <laughs> sitting on the edge of the couch typing with his head down. And I'm like, I got my fake. I went to the bathroom, put my fake teeth in. And I'm like, I'm here to see Mr. Singer. And he goes like this. He puts his hand up. He goes, just a minute. keep." I'm like, who is this little shit, right? <laughs> and he looks up and he goes, I'm Brian Singer. And oh, my God, you're Sabretooth. And he jumped on the glass table. I don't know how it didn't break. And he's like, he was so excited. He's like, choke me, choke me, choke me. And I went, ah! and he saw the teeth and I got the job. <laughs> that is the best story. <laughs> yeah. I would, And so th the moral of the story is never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> so wow. I'm, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> wow. I love those stories. I mean, I remember it was, um, I think it's Billy Zapka who another nice guy who played, you know, an imposing role in like karate kid and stuff and having to go to his car during that audition and like pump like ACDC to, to, to jack himself up to be like a, a bad guy. I mean, I, I love these behind the scenes things. Did, did you ever have a feeling of how important it was going to be? I think I remember talking to uh, the cast years ago um, and uh, I think it was someone telling me, it might've been Hugh saying his agent, literally was like the word on the street the movie was going to bomb and oh. telling him like i think the quote was get ready to get in the back of the line for roles from now on because this 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 movie is going to do so bad and no one's going to want to cast you after this 
and I'm boy, were they wrong. <laughs> I guess somebody was really wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never know. That's the thing you never know. You know, it was. I had seen the cartoons and and seen some of the comics and and stuff like that when I was growing up, and I was like, oh, this could be cool. I didn't realize, did not realize for the life of me, just how big it was going to be and how it was going to blow up like it did. But it was fantastic to be a part of it. Like with, I mean, everybody involved, you know, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart, all these guys, Hugh, Halle Berry. I mean, it was just, it's a who's who. And and to be a part of it, I was just blown away. It's amazing. What a cast. All right. So we got to get into the main event, uh, so to speak, uh, today. Let's, let's, we got to talk Last Spartan. And yes. I mean, on so many levels, this uh graphic novel checks the boxes um but most importantly on importance too um yeah how did this project come about and come together i know you, you've said i i did a little research i've been working on it for years yeah how did this come to fruition and come together because it really is a, 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 a yeah like i said it checks i i'm running out of uh way, words to describe it <laughs> like i said yeah, it checks yeah, the box yeah. on so many levels how did it all come together and and where did the concept come from? Because it's it really is very, very important. Yeah, it's based on a novel written by John Saunders, a buddy of mine. And he the book came across my uh, came across my desk 15 years ago. And I read it and I always wanted to do something with it. But my wife and I, who's Renee Gerlings, who was the editor in chief of Top Cow Comics and all of that, was uh, we were trying to figure out what to do with it how to, what kind of a property to turn this into. So I was talking to Tom DeSanto and David Hader from X-Men days. And I said, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I, I really love this property. It's got a great story behind it. It's got a great cause. What is the best property for, place to take this property to shop it? And they said, man, you've got a built-in uh, team there with Renee mm -hmm. and that turned it into a graphic novel. And I was like, wow, okay. So then that whole process started and I was like, okay, who do I want to write this? You know, and I, I thought, immediately thought of Christopher Priest mm. and reached out to him. I'm like, trying to reach out to him. And I'm like, how am I gonna get a hold of Christopher Priest, right? <laughs> and so Renee gets on the phone and calls Jim McLaughlin and says, hey, how can I get a hold of Christopher Priest for Tyler? And he goes, Well, I just happened to represent him. So oh, <laughs> wow. And that came about. And then we just started talking with Christopher. And Christopher loved the idea, you know, about dealing with the human trafficking. And we wanted to take this novel and turn it into a bigger world and create more characters. And so we that's what we did. You know, we'd have several meetings with Christopher and we'd say, hey, we want to put this in. He goes, that would never happen in real life. And of course, we would come up with article after article after article oh, yeah. of just how this trafficking happened and mm. happened and continues to happen in America. And he was like, wow, that's going in the book. And this was a two-year, two-and-a-half-year process of getting wow. laid down, figured out where we wanted to do. Because, I mean, he's been very busy, like with doing so many other things. So... And then um, we, st we had the story and we were talking, I was looking up artists online and seeing who I really liked. I'm like, I'd show Renee pictures. She goes, oh, I've worked with him. Will Conrad, I'll give him a call. Boom, there we go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jimbo Salgado, Michael Montanat. And then I, I'm like, okay, well, what are we gonna do for a cover? We need a an amazing cover. She goes, I'll talk to my old boss, Mark Silvestri. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's and ridiculous. Then, you know, and 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 Mark, you know, is so busy. It was like it was down to the wire. We we got this um probably just two weeks before we were ready to launch. And then we're like, oh my God, how are we gonna get it colored and everything? You know, and, and Renee's like, I got you. And she reaches out to, oh, uh, you know, Mark's old colorist. And, and so it has been a uh, 
passion project of mine for years now. And, and here we are bringing it to life. That's an incredible story. And I, I it's funny, like this is, this couldn't have been a better transition because I was going to ask you how it was working with your wife on this, because I love seeing you guys both pop up in videos on social. And obviously she's another icon as well, like in the industry and she's, you know, been made her mark for years now. Um, how has that been? Because it, it really seems like you guys have uh, like, it doesn't, it not, it doesn't work for everyone. Um, and, right. and it's amazing. I, I, I do some stuff with my wife as well, including this. And so it's nice to see. So I, how has that been? Because you guys, obviously it seems like the, the, the professional chemistry is just as good as obviously the, the personal chemistry. Oh man. I mean, I am just so lucky and blessed to have her, you know? I drive her completely crazy. I am not <laughs> gonna lie. <laughs> you know, because I'm I'll come in like I'm the idea guy. I'm like, man, we should do this. We got we gotta do this. And she goes, You mean I gotta do this? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you got the connections, honey. <laughs> so it's been like that's Will Conrad right there. Oh, that's the I, art is insane. It is insane. And that's the thing. I wanted it so I, I wanted it realistic, gritty, because that's what this mm -hmm. is. It's a, it's about the gritty underworld of human trafficking in Atlanta, Georgia. And I wanted to make it as you know, I, I love art like that. That mm -hmm. just blows me away. And that's the way the whole book is. It's a 144 page graphic novel done by top tier artists and is just amazing plus it tells one hell of a great story and hopefully it'll raise awareness and open people's eyes to what mm -hmm. is actually happening in uh, america and around the world but every city in america has this problem yeah and we need to deal with it and and do our best to wipe out human trafficking i mean human trafficking has been around since dawn of time it's the worst it's ever been now because of the internet and yeah. you know and i've been teaming up with uh human trafficking awareness organizations like deliverfund.org they actually have a tier in the um uh, in the kickstarter where you can get uh 12 ounces of their coffee and the i saw that bottle. i saw that yeah so you can get great coffee and have a great read in the morning and you're supporting a human trafficking awareness organization that is doing great things to help law enforcement put an end to human trafficking. Mm. So, yeah. So there's a lot of great, really cool tiers. There's retailer tiers. There's, mm. I mean, all with retailer tiers where I would come and do an appearance at your store. That's so cool. You know, at, so at cool. a really, really reasonable price. So yeah. it's, uh, I'm, I'm very, very passionate about this you know i mean i go and do them i go and do store signings with uh you know for the saber tooth and the halloweens and adding this to it you get it all with one shot you know so it's kind of cool it's really cool and you mentioned obviously you know the story behind it and some of the things i i never thought about the internet part i mean obviously i i have a new oh. background in news and i never thought about and then, oh man, with with AI coming on, I mean, like, everything's gonna get ten times worse. Um, yeah. How, what you know, you you did a lot of research for this. What what did what else did you discover? Um, because that, it's it is fascinating to me. Um, not fascinating. That that's a that's a wrong word to use. Um, well, it's eye opening. It yeah. Is eye -opening. There you go. When when you are looking at all of the stuff that is going on, it is just it's jaw dropping. It's like. Uh, I can't believe this is happening, but a lot of the times, and this is where the parents have to really be vigil about what their kids are doing, because a lot of times kids are talking online to someone that they think is of their age. Hey, let's go meet up. And, and it turns out being something totally, totally different and totally wrong. You know, like with doing my research also at these conventions, I'm always talking to the fans trying to raise awareness and and some of them have been uh, you know very forthcoming to share their stories and and one gentleman said that his niece was just about trafficked oh. and she was in a bar uh, or a club and they drugged her drink and they were trying to take her out the back door luckily a bouncer saw them 
stopped them, beat the heck out of one of them, and the other guy took off. He saved that girl, but with the law enforcement backtracking these guys' steps, they found three other women drugged and chained in a hotel getting ready to be trafficked with this fourth one. So it happens. It happens all the time, all over the place. So be very careful, be vigilant mm. about that. And that is, you know, that is, it, it's the message that I want to get out with this book. And um, I appreciate everybody's support and would love people to check it out and grab a tear because it's dealing with a very serious topic. And and, and for those watching, obviously I've, I've popped up the QR card a few times um, to go check it out, go check out the Kickstarter. Uh, it's live until November 16th. Very important. And obviously, as Tyler said, you know, grab a tear. I mean, I might have just grabbed like a, I don't have a comic book store, but grab like a sign. It's just, like, it just, it's just, it's super cool. Um, I will come to your house and sign for you. <laughs> sign my baby's forehead. It'll be fine. We could put a little, uh, we could put a Halloween mask on and everything. It'll be great. Um, no, I, I, you know, you, you kind of answered this already, but I, I wanted to say, like, what do you hope fans take away from this? Because it really is incredibly cool. And I love the fact that the internet has this downsides, right? And and it, it proliferates so much of this terrible stuff. But the upsides is obviously things like Kickstarter and being able to do so much more. And the fact that you have this powerhouse duo in, in you and your wife, you know, spearheading something like this and then bringing on all your amazing friends to, to, to do all these amazing things. But it's really that that's really like the we don't talk enough about the positives of things. And, and this is really the positives. And I see you on on Instagram and I see you talking to people I know and and that are great. Um, and I, I just love seeing that. I mean, it, it might sound cheesy. It's just it's a genuine thing. It's it's the good stuff of the Internet and why the community is yeah. around. What is what, what do you take away from that? And what do you hope fans take away from from this whole experience? You know, just like I say, raising the awareness, realizing that this is very serious and it is a serious thing out there. You know, a lot of people, they have their head down. They think, oh, it won't happen to me or, you know, God forbid it does. Hopefully it doesn't. But be aware and protect yourself, protect your loved ones, protect the ones that are more most vulnerable. And that's just what I hope that this book brings about the awareness of that but also you're getting the great story written by christopher priest Mm. and all this great art and it's 144 page graphic novel only available on kickstarter so please check it out and before we go i gotta ask i ask everyone this um because you've like i said you've done some iconic roles we didn't even pull this up uh i mean you talked about halloween I mean, it's it, the it goes, it's the season. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. Um, is there a dream role out there or a dream project that you have, you know, sitting in your head, rattling around that you're like, there's something like what's next for you after this? Obviously you're fully focused on this right now. Yes. Is there yes. something, you know, that you've been wanting to do either. It can be an acting, it could be other things. Is there something in there that you've been, you know, Yeah, I've got a, you know, depending on how well this one goes, I've got a dream project that I would love to do, Uh, you know, another project. I I can't talk about that one now. But (laughs) for a dream role, I would love to do a Frankenstein role, something like that. I think that would be really cool. I mean, there's so many different things that I want to go. It's like my, my wife says, I'm like a 12 year old in a candy shop. I go like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. It's like, Stay focused. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And before yeah. I go out, um, I definitely want to, you, you have an amazing trailer. It's about 45 seconds long. I want to play that and then we'll, we'll say our parting, our parting shots. Um, but I got I want to play it for the audience. They, they get a chance to see it because this is, it, it's amazing. I pulled it off the, the Kickstarter and uh, indulge me. I'm going to play this right now so everyone can see yeah. it. Please do roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Let's roll it up. <laughs> Frank King, 
The lone survivor of a massacred outlaw biker club, the Last Spartans, walks a perilous path guided by the code of the ancient Spartan warriors. But his journey takes an otherworldly turn as visions and omens from the gods beckon him to break his parole and risk his freedom to rescue a missing child from the clutches of Atlanta's human trafficking underworld. When determined decoy agent Amanda Harper crosses his path, fed up with government bureaucracy and on a mission to save them all, they both find an unlikely ally in a monumental showdown against an international cartel. It's incredible. <laughs> that is, I've worked on trailers for Kickstarter for friends who have like indie comics and are doing things and it's amazing. That is one of the best I've ever, I mean, that's like movie quality trailer. So thank you. Very amazing. Very well yeah. done. Yeah, I, I, Jesse did that. You know, I'd, I'd say his last name, but I'd probably butcher it and he'd kill me. But, <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, I've, I've just been lucky to have this great team of, of highly talented people, you know, from the writers to the artists to the colorists to everybody. And, and it's all because of Renee bringing it all together with all her connections from all the decades in, in comic books, you know. Um, so yeah, please check it out, people. I would greatly appreciate your support. We've got a long way to go. Yes, we are fully funded, but when you have these top tier people and you pay them their full rates, you got a long ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I would greatly appreciate your support so we can keep doing this and, and keep bringing some really cool projects to you guys. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, we'll have to do this again once uh, you're able to announce that. Um, Tyler Maine, my friend, thank you so much. This has been an absolute honor. And like I said, we got to do this again. This is this is great. Yes. Is thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it all. Love and support, everybody. Peace. You are always welcome here. Thank you, brother.